literally sponsor a bowl game in Arizona. How are they not the chip for white people? To- Tostitos? Tostitos, yeah. Tostitos. <laughs> Tostitos. The so- the hey, 40 somethings named Glenn. Are you looking for a delicious salsa delivery method? Try Tostitos. Try Tostitos. They're as white as you are. <laughs> um, I have camera news, Brandon Chalmers. Holy shit. Camera news. It only took us being off for like what? <laughs> two weeks, three weeks? Who the fuck knows how long we've been gone? Yeah. So the, the company that Olympus evolved into... They just mm-hmm. announced a new lens and a new camera. Um, it's going. If I had pearls, I'd clutch them. Yeah. So, do you remember my my little Olympus uh, EP5 that I used to take everywhere? Um, that yeah. had the two dials that didn't work because <laughs> yes, because <laughs> it was like ten years old and apparently that model had weak dials or whatever. Um, I was going to say, and you bought that one like secondhand too. So yeah, it was it was cheap from like. It was it was shipped out of like Malaysia from some guy who didn't quite speak English, um, but it worked. Uh, so that they they stopped that model. Um, they stopped the EP line for the EPL line. Um, oh, okay. And the EPL line is is sort of like the Olympus consumer grade, still interchangeable lens. Um, I think the the difference is it has a sixteen megapixel sensor the old one and then only one dial so there's only one dial so whoa (laughs) uh but they announced an ep7 which is the next model of the one that i used to have um wait but i have an epm 10 you have a omd 10 oh i have an omd 10 yeah oh okay so the omd line looks like a camera the EPs right. look like a rangefinder, so it's a, like a slimmer, um, a slimmer style. Uh, where's my fucking? I have, I have a, my hat, my stupid. Anyway, you're fine. You're, you're fine. Um, it's gonna be uh, twenty megapixels, so four more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got the two dials, uh, but it looks cool. If you if you look up um, a photo of the EP seven. Um, it looks, okay. it looks, it's got that retro styling, uh, that well, Olympus me, is kind me, of known for. Let me take for. a look. You said, uh, EP7? EP7. It looks really cool. No I viewfinder. So you, you kind of hold it out camera. here. So I see a camcorder that looks like a really hardcore version of Google Glass. No, o- Olympus EP7. Oh, is it still Olympus? It's still Olympus. Yeah. Let's see if that changes anything. Olympus EP7, yeah! EPL10, E... No, no EPL, e. just EP7. Here's the Olympus Pen E-P7. Yeah. Oh, okay. It looks pretty Well, slick. I can super... Yeah, I mean, it looks very similar to the one that I have. I really like the really straightforward Olympus pen, um, not logo kind of logo, yeah. like yeah. as if it were seventies logo. Yeah. Um, really nice piece. And what is that thing in the center color or mono? Is that just a black and white ver- switch on the front of that thing? Yeah. It's, it's a switch that allows you, they have different color modes. So like they have different film simulations. So if you're shooting JPEG, you can just flip it on the side and, and just get really creative. But it's it's got that um, it's got that flip screen that flips up and down instead of to the side, which I like for like um, if you're doing like a waist level shooting, you can just flip it up and shoot it without like I don't know. It's, it's yeah yeah yeah. It's I was gonna say that's that's what I have. This looks like a very rad street ish pocket small bag kind of camera. Oh yeah. So it looks like they're very much. <laughs> Hitting on the, if I had to take a guess, um, hmm, 28 to 37 year old, I'm going to assume dude who looks probably more like me than like you, who <laughs> tends to wear chrome bags, but not the big one, like the small, like 
<laughs> not quite a fanny pack, but not quite the full honking thing. Wears a lot of hats that flip forward <laughs> like that, where you end up a lot of bike riding going on. Um, I mean, good on them. Like, it, it looks like a rad thing. You know what this would be kind of neat for? If you randomly went to, like, an amusement park or something like that, or went on a trip and you wanted to have one camera, mm -hmm. and you just wanted to get really into just shooting with a fixed lens and playing with it and getting comfortable with the idea of like treating it almost like a point and shoot in a way. Yeah. Like if you yeah. treated that more like a disposable camera, then necessarily like a really nice piece of, of kit. I think you could have a lot of fun with that, but there, there is a real comfort level that I think you need to have with your equipment that you're just like, Nope, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to shoot the whole time and i'm just like you got to be really into cameras to enjoy something like that yeah but i don't dislike it i appreciate the fact that they're still keeping with that kind of retro ish look the chrome and the black i did see the white i don't care for that quite yeah, as the, much the white one's eh but i i really yeah. like the look of it here's yeah here's the sad thing like it's only going to be released in japan and europe <laughs> so now you really want it is what you're saying. I I was like, well, I've got some I've got the the GX8 that I don't use because I I tried to take it out on a shoot and it just it did not it did not do what I wanted it to do. I was just like, Ugh. so I'm just going to stick with my um DSLR. But I ha so I have this mirrorless one. It's it's still Micro Four Thirds. I like the format and I really like the EP5 cuz it was small i could carry it everywhere um right it had that flip screen that i really liked um mm -hmm. but i i don't know I, I didn't like that the knobs on um the the knobs always tended to fail so i was like well i i guess i'll just hold out until olympus releases something that's cool and maybe trade up for that and now they have but it's not going to be local <laughs> so um and I guess that just shows you that Olympus is doing really well in Japan and Europe and then not here. <laughs> I'm really surprised, though. And yeah. to be fair, they might not be doing really well in Japan or Europe. They might just be doing better than they're doing here. Yeah, or well enough, well enough to, like, justify yeah, it. Yeah, right. I, yeah. But, I mean, a lot of manufacturers of things do fucking car manufacturers do that shit a ton so i'm not surprised yeah um so i don't know i'll i'll hang on to the gx until it's time to trade it in but like how how much is this thing gonna run you oh i have no like idea the conversion rate for that. well, that's what we got to figure out because yeah. if you're gonna upgrade and we're gonna do a dumb thing <laughs> and have it shipped from let's hope Europe, so this way you can at least somewhat understand everything. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> if they're doing a British release and you got to deal with a lot more vowels, <laughs> you can totally handle that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't. I can't read Japanese. <laughs> right. I, <laughs> I'd be like, I. Th I think I'm in aperture priority. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like a. It comes in German or Japanese. Take your pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did take a semester of German, so I can fudge that. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Jamie, which Oompa mode is it in? <laughs> Clink. Clink. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Clink. Uh, all right. But uh, that's exciting. Uh, Olympus is not dead. And they got a new lens that I, I forgot what the length was, but it was it seemed cool. I don't know. It didn't excite me as much as the body. The body was like, oh, yeah. Hang on. I need a little more light. Keep talking. I can hear you. All right. Well, I'm going to hit the intro. And we're back. You look brighter hey! and lighter. <laughs> hey. hey. Uh, One of those is absolutely true. <laughs> uh, Brandon, hit us with the intro.
<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your dials, do not adjust your sets. For in front of you and inside your ears in Dolby 5.1 surround sound, you find yourselves with your friends and ours, the fucking do a cast. Part of the greatest podcast network on the planet Earth, the Hard Knock Media Podcasting Network. Now, Jamie and Noguchi, I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking the same thing, too. What does Hard Knock Media mean? It means N-O-C, as in nerds of color. Now, does that mean me? Probably not, but it does mean a whole lot of other people like you, like the boss, <laughs> like a ton of other members of the Hard Knock Media Podcasting Network that bring you so much rad shit. Oh my God. I'm talking about movie preview re -re reviews, movie reviews, fucking Keith's new podcast about toys and all sorts of other cool shit. Things about Batman, my mutual love of Pearl Jam, and many, <laughs> many, many more. But for oh, today, wow. in your ear holes you will find yourselves as two good friends catch up as they have not seen each other in some time and bring you just a little corner of our internet <laughs> that we like to call the fucking do it cast it's almost like the sesame street of the hard rock media podcast <laughs> we don't necessarily go in with the intent of teaching you something but you might just learn something after all. Speaking of which, Jamie Noguchi, the Hard Knock Media Podcasting Network, and the fucking Do A Cast today are sponsored by the number 12 <laughs> and the letter G. That's right, baby. The, the number the 12 day. and the letter That's G. That's the letter of the day. That's the letter of the day. Oh, my God. The day. The day. G. Ooh, buddy, I have been up for way too long. <laughs> so <laughs> I am tired and a little punch truck, little fired up on caffeine, maybe a little bit of alcohol. So I am just the right kind of loosey goosey to get into some shit. Oh, man. Well, uh, I have to give a shout out <clears throat> to Keith's uh, toy podcast because he interviewed uh, Larry ha Hama. Hama? Larry Hama. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, hang on. Are you talking about the creator of fucking G.I. Joe? Not, he Is that what you're talking about? He wasn't the creator, but he wrote all the Marvel comics. He's, he's responsible for the, the stats on the back card of all the, all the G.I. Joe toys. Like, they saw the what's, way... What's the difference, Jamie? <laughs> if I have an idea, and then you make it worlds better, <laughs> sure, I may have created it, but you really created it. Like... <laughs> can be the dad but basically at that point i'm a sperm donor he's really the guy who raised you now yeah. you might call him stepdad but you and i both know one of the two <laughs> of them is getting a little something extra on father's day <laughs> that's right and we're not gonna go touting it but i can tell you right now one of the two of them is getting a steak dinner and it ain't the one that's a two pump chomp that's what i'm <laughs> saying jamie well he he did um let's see what did he do he the backing the card backing of every G.I. Joe figure um, when Hasbro... Which is... Like, with all the stats. The story, like... Yeah. Every, right, because, like, every kid got a G.I., at least of a certain age, got a G.I. Joe, and, like, you were either in the store reading the backstory going, whoa, that's rad, and you'd make an infinite decision, or somebody would get you a G.I. Joe for a birthday gift, Christmas gift, what have you, you know, your uh, your confirmations, your, your whatever it is. Yeah. And... You got one and you unwrapped that bad boy and you looked at it and you made your immediate visual assessment. And the first thing you did with the G.I. Joe is you flipped that motherfucker over because you knew there was just an absolute cavalcade of information coming at mm -hmm. you. And you were about to fall in love with this character. Oh, yeah. No matter what they wrote. Oh, yeah. And he when he, he I think he designed it or something about it. Like when Hasbro saw his character Bible for all the different characters, they were like, we need to put this on the back of the cards. Fucking legendary. Like and and that has influenced yeah. every single toy run that's been in a been in a in a plastic shell a clam thing and a and a and a and a paperback. Like all the Master of the of uh, the Universe figures, all the Star Wars figures, all the stats on the bullshit on the back. That's thanks to fucking Larry Hammer. And Keith had him. 
on the podcast. Yeah. And he didn't tell us. Just chit chat him up. <laughs> no. Just like he didn't tell us a fucking, about fucking Lim Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Dude's trying to be all chill about everything. I don't talk to anybody. Well, my, my friend, I don't have any Lim. pull at all. <laughs> You guys are just joking around with me. I don't have any pull at all. I don't know any boss. Come the fuck on, my man. Like Larry, do I need to roll in? I I'm gonna JCVD his fucking door in one day in the middle of a fucking podcast. I just start brushing the dirt off his shoulders because somebody needs to. Yeah, and 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 the network has been interviewing the director of fucking in the heights and fucking fast nine like come on keith come on okay hang on a second now i'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus here because i do love our esteemed boss but is there anyone on the podcasting network that loves the fast and the furious series more than you and i <laughs> my email box didn't chime about any sort of interview or anything did yours so so yours? he are you about to tell me that you had an opportunity to interview somebody <laughs> and i'm gonna fucking shout at you is that what you're telling me no i'm gonna i'm about to tell you that we you and i are not journalists so we didn't qualify but keith keith was oh. trying to set it up oh yeah oh i and hang on I, has he not seen my article about hoping that Garth Brooks dies in a fire? If that doesn't make me a fucking journalist, I don't know what does. There, there's some sort of credential. Like, I think we needed to be registered with whatever studio. Like, I think there's a there's a, like a, a formal way to register with it. And Keith was trying Is his. This, look, I'm already ordained. I don't know what else I need. Yeah. Like Universal Life Church, got it. <laughs> church of Bacon, got it. There's a what church of bacon. What more do I need? God damn right there's a church of bacon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah. How about that for journalistic integrity? <laughs> I did the research on the Church of Bacon. All right. <laughs> I read an article today that ranked the top 50 fucking Fast and Furious stars. And by the way, <laughs> the idea that Giselle hits number 13, but somehow Mia is in the top 10. Get the fuck out of here. Yo, she can't make a, Look, what is it? Tuna salad I, sandwich? I, I, well, okay, one, no one likes the toonie here, so that's not her <laughs> fault. But more important, she ain't good. No. She's had how many goddamn movies to develop a character? Look, I don't know Jordana Brewster personally. I'm sure she's a wonderful woman. But on screen, she's a goddamn coat rack. They're, they're doing her characters no favors, and... I don't think it's got anything to do with the character. I think they're writing her just about the end of her ability. Oh, no. Because Jamie Pop Quiz, tell me all the other really great shit she's been in. I think she was Give in a Crow one. movie. Was she? Yeah. It was a sequel. It, oh, yes. It was a sequel uh, that nobody watched. It was a sequel. I watched it. Right. Right. So are you telling me that Giselle, or should I say the best part of Han's life? <laughs> or should I say fucking Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman or should yeah. I say the woman who managed to lift a fucking handprint off of an ass that she volunteered for willingly? <laughs> they wouldn't have robbed that fucking bank without her butt. And she volunteered for it. And you and I both know, Jamie, she's former Mossad. She could have killed that guy with a wink and a smile. Mm -hmm. And she chose to do it anyway. All, all, while longingly flirting with Han. Because <laughs> she knows that while that guy might get to touch her butt, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's, that is <laughs> quality usda themiscara imported <laughs> beef baby and no one is gonna tell me that fucking mia belongs in the 10 and giselle is hanging out at number 13 who who was number one in that list oh uh, paul walker of course oh. so who anybody is dies are automatically number who's number two what about Stop. jesse where's jesse jesse is 
I was mad at how high on the list Jesse was, if I'm honest. <laughs> like, hang on. I'm, I'm opening up. This article came courtesy of uh, Marty Day sending it over in our Slack channel. Uh, yada, 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 yada. Uh, this is from The Ringer, and it's a ranking of, let's see, uh, this is from TheRinger.com, a ranking of the 51 best characters, or should we say a ranking of all the characters. Yeah, that's a lot the of Fast characters. Furious franchise. Now, it is, and that's a reminder of how many fucking throwaway characters they are. By the way, 100% got it right that Ronda Rousey is at number 51. <laughs> 100% got it right. Like, no no question. Now, I'm going to go scrolling hard. Let's get to the end here. Okay, so uh, Brian O'Connor, better known as Paul Walker, number one. Yeah. Dom, number two, Vin Diesel. Uh, number three, Letty, which I'm I'm good with. I guess. Yeah, um, you got to put the stars at the I, top. Sure. I, I think <clears throat> she belongs in the top ten, absolutely. Number three feels like a lot. Han making it number four which I feel like is absolutely respectful. And I, I'm honestly shocked he wasn't number five. Yeah. But uh, let's see. Number five, Roman Pierce, uh, okay. which is Tyrese. Number six, Tej, which is ludicrous. I, I would have put number Tej a little Number seven, higher. Dwayne Johnson. I, see, I think Tej is exactly where he needs to be. I'd mm. probably put Tej above uh, Roman, but yeah, because that, I think why. of Too Fast, Too Furious, yeah. I, I get the idea of having uh, Roman that high. Okay. Like, it, it makes sense to me. Um, Hobbs, number seven. Deckard Shaw, Jason Statham's character, number eight. Uh, Vince at number nine. Oh, okay. See, and I was critical of this at first, and then I realized how many things he brought together, because he was a serious focus of the first Fast and Furious movie. And then he ends up becoming this weird kind of martyr character in Fast Five. Right. Because not only does he help Brian against what you would think would be his better judgment, but then having that moment with Dom and then tying everything together makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess that works. <clears throat> so Mia is number 10. Now, and again... <laughs> <laughs> Mia was in the Fast and the Furious, Fast and Furious, Fast Five, Fast and Furious Six, and Furious Seven. And manages to just get to number 10. <laughs> and I don't think she deserves that spot. Now, yeah. I also don't think Kurt Russell as Mr. Nobody deserves number 11. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, no, thank you. Now, I will say Helen Mirren definitely deserves somewhere near the number 12 spot. Yeah. I'd put her 15 and above, so having her at number 12, I am super good with. Yeah, for sure. But then here we are, number 13, Giselle. And I think Gal Gadot got fucking robbed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to continue to follow up to number 20, and I think we'll call this it. Number 14, Idris Elba. Number 15, Charlize Theron. Number 16, Johnny Tran, which I thought was a real high ranking for a guy who was in one movie. Yeah, he, he does And had shit. no fault. Now, <clears throat> hang on a second. If Now, I, I say this with bated breath. We have not, at the time of recording... Seen the new Fast and Furious movie. We will be heading on Sunday to go see the Fast and Furious movie. I am super stoked about it. If I find out that Johnny Tran is in the new one, I am going to shout. I mean, shout. It's a good You're thing. You're going to hear a grown man fucking shout. <laughs> Goddamn right, Johnny Tran. Goddamn right. It's a good it's thing. A stank on that name. It's a good thing we have a private theater. <laughs> I know, but I'm telling you right now, I might go back to a public showing just to fucking put some goddamn stank on the name. God, I deserves the credit. I I have <clears throat> I have a portable recorder. Maybe I should bring it with us. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, number seventeen, Hattie Shaw, which I really think um. having Statham's sister that high after one movie that isn't even a legit Fast and Furious movie feels wrong. Yeah, I I liked her character, but I 
I don't know. She's she's not as good as some of the others. Uh, she that's too high. That's too high. That's too high. Now here's your here's your boy Jesse, Aww. number eighteen. Aww. I I feel like Jesse uh, shouldn't be on see. the list. I feel like Jesse should get like a, a special mention on the side because they they have him in one. He gets right, killed absolutely. and nothing yes. else. So right, but Johnny Tran was in one, doesn't get killed, and manages to get way higher on the list. <laughs> You're telling me that the guy who shot Jesse gets a higher billing than the guy who got shot? <laughs> what sort of NRA bullshit is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> god damn. Uh, by the way, also, number 19, Ramsey. Ramsey at 19? Are you kidding me? She should be higher. She brought she... together fucking Furious 7. Yeah. 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 And uh, number 20, the guy who's too slow to make away with the money, Hector. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, now, my God. I just realized something that I hadn't thought about, and I'm going to scroll through this real fast, but I actually need to figure out what the name is of the guy who was in the first Fast and Furious movie who just disappeared. Who was that? You know who I'm talking about? He was the guy who was hanging out with Jesse and Vince and Dom, who told the, the guy, the uh, streets closed pizza boy, and I like his haircut. And Shoot. I forgot about that guy. Right. Is he on the list? That's what I want to figure out. Is he on the list? Also, I feel like if they're ranking 50, it feels like they're just ranking every single character that's ever appeared in the franchise. Right. And that's my question. Leon is the guy who I'm thinking of. <laughs> and I need to figure out whether or not Leon is on that list. Because I had said this before and I say it again. I think that that guy deserves some real fucking justice. Mm -hmm. I am all about justice for Leon. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me let me find it here. Justice okay. for Leon. So let's see. I'm gonna scroll vamp, baby. What what's what's going on with you? Well, I've been messing with the the audio settings in OBS, so our sync is gonna look way mm -hmm. off, but the audio is still gonna be okay. So if you're watching this on YouTube, stop watching the video feed because it's not gonna line up. <laughs> <laughs> and I I don't I, I put a delay on it last time we recorded and I don't know if that helped and so I tried to 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 mess with it live here and I don't know if that helped at all so like somebody's gonna have to teach me how to fucking use OBS to record these things because I don't I just today right before we started recording figured out how to flip my screen so now I you can read the P Lander Z poster like it's supposed to. Um, ah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So things, things, things on the technical side of this podcast are going awry, but I, I don't know. 50 seems to be a huge list. Like, do they, do they talk about the methodology with which they compiled this list or is it just from the, I gotta from, the from the author's I, I, ass? <laughs> much like every recipe that I've ever read online, I have no interest in how you got there. <laughs> I am a I'm a firm believer of I will eat the sausage. I have no interest on in how it's made. <laughs> um, by the way, Leon number twenty eight. So not only is he on the list, but he's at relatively high uh, area. This person also says that Leon should come back, and I, he mentions a line in this that Leon says that I completely forgot that he calls Vince quote old coyotes are us, which. Equally kind of makes sense and kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I really hope that now that I know that Han is back and they just kind of let that cat out of the bag, I hope that Leon is part of fucking Charlie's Theron's crew. Ah, yes, that would be awesome. Like, I, I genuinely like if we find out that he was actually best friends with John Cena and he's running on Cena's crew and you just see Dongo Leon and, and him just 
<laughs> look at him and just go, streets closed, pizza boy, and then fucking elbows him in the face. I'd be like, yes. Eh! What about Bow Wow's character? Justice for Leon. Is Bow Wow's character? Uh, I don't remember his name, but I'm sure he's on this list. I feel like uh, Bow Wow's okay. car should be on the list. With the Hulk hands? Uh, let's see. Jed Moss. Yeah, Bow Wow's number 34. Mm. Twinkie. I feel, I feel like he should be. Which higher. makes a lot of sense. I feel like he should be uh, a little higher. You got a lot of love for Tokyo Drift. I do. But to be fair, he was one character and he was. And also, he's still rated higher than what's his fuck, the one who was actually the star of Tokyo Drift. That, that was that was my next question. Like, where's the main guy from Tokyo Drift? Because if Bow Wow was below him, we were gonna have a we were gonna have a fight. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me see. Yeah, oh, excuse me. Goodness. Let's see. Scott Eastwood, number 44. <laughs> Kevin Hart, number 43. Oh, I forgot Let's Scott see. Eastwood was in the movies. Mm-hmm. Kevin well, Hart? One. Kevin Hart is in the movie? He was in um, Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, Remember, he was the air right. marshal. That's right. I'm an, I'm an air marshal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's I'm gonna see. I'm gonna stop and restart OBS so that this uh, is is less weird because you sneezed on video and ten seconds later the sneeze came out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pause here. Record. All right, we're recording. All right, so where so where is the guy who starred in Tokyo? Dr I don't even know his character's name. Like the lead dude in in Tokyo Drift. So the actor's name is Lucas Black. Um, he his character's name is Sean Boswell, which tells us everything we need to know about that movie, because I completely forgot about. Yeah, that. me too. And he is at number 30. And he does not deserve to be there. Not at all. He should be 50. <laughs> Yeah, because I think that's his age. <laughs> he was not in high school when they made that movie. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. And I genuinely, Jamie, every so often, right? I go to a lunch at a local restaurant and they have a TV show on. And hang on, I'm going to see what the fuck is this, is this guy's name? Let's see, because I know he doesn't do as much stuff as uh, Scott Bakula does. So let's see. Uh... Let's see, uh, <laughs> Lucas Black. Okay, I don't care about the net worth because I don't think it's much. Um, Jesus Christ, that is. Uh, there we go. I think that's it. Uh, NCIS New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starring Scott Bakula. So oh my I God. like to pretend that this awful show is just Scott Bakula quantum leaping into a television show to make it right <laughs> and he's stuck but what i learn is yeah like it just <sighs> mm. all i'm saying is <clears throat> that guy looks like peyton manning's cousin that you really don't want to hang out with <laughs> like <laughs> like that's a man who has strong opinions about black lives matter yeah that's a guy who definitely has a chevrolet tattoo <laughs> oh my god yeah he was not the best part of that movie no mm-hmm -mm. No, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Actual DK <sighs> sitting on the dock was a better character than he was in his own goddamn movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only saving grace for for that movie is that I know without looking that Han, who was the real star of that movie, mm. is number four. And I'm good. Yeah. For sure. Like it is the only saving grace that I have for this list is that I have no real fight about Han's position on that list. Yeah. And because of that, 
I will reluctantly settle down on my disappointment of the Giselle pay, uh, placement on that list at number 13. Yeah. He, he, they did right Seriously. by Han. They did Jordana right by Han. Jordana Brewster doesn't deserve to get... Uh, like, all I'm saying is Jordana Brewster should be getting Gal Gadot a fucking Coke. <laughs> like, that's what that's what should be happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Yeah, well, even if they wanted to bring Giselle back, I don't think they could afford her at this point. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It was, it was a... It was a dumb death... Uh, but you know, they're lost. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, so what the fuck are we talking about? Well, I, I, this is just a catch up episode. So Brandon, what have you been geeking oh, on? Is it okay? Yeah. What have you been geeking on? <laughs> so a couple things. One, if you follow me on Instagram, you will learn that I decided to redo my office a fucking again. Um, and because of that, I decided to do one of those Pinterest ass accent walls. Yeah. With like the tape and the multiple colors and all sorts of things like that. So I have two different colors of turquoise with stripes creating a mountain scene that I then mounted the guitars and the TV back up on. And it is now reflecting so much like positive light in this room. I switched out a bunch of daylight bulbs. I got a really nice rug to go under the drum kit. Aww. So everything's kind of organized together. I moved a bunch of stuff around, hung a bunch of things. I actually got as a Christmas gift that I get to hang. I think I can see it from here. Adam Savage did a custom poster of the hand drawings that he did to create the Revenant bear costume that he did at Comic-Con a few years ago. Yes, yes. I absolutely adored it. Right, because he drug a lifeless Leo DiCaprio all through Comic Con the entire time. Yeah, yeah, which is fucking great. <laughs> so I got that. I finally got that framed. It only took me six months to get it framed. Also, I decided to treat myself to something that I have wanted for some time. I'm gonna go run and get it. Okay, and you're gonna be excited because you are into this too hang on a second i was really hoping that the the accent wall was going to be um the the podcasting wall because i really wanted people to see it oh yes yes i got the lego saturn 5 rocket yes and it's fucking rad nice i decided to treat myself and i redid hang on just to give you an idea of scale Wow. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> does it does yeah. it have the capsule? Like, hang on. Let me see if I can actually see it from the ground. Ooh. What are we talking about? Nice. Oh, the 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 sections. Everything breaks apart in different pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Whoa. Yeah. You can break it into the sections, and then actually break the the nose cone off, so and then you can cool. actually. The Lunar Lander, hang on, let me go grab yes, that. Yes, the Lunar Lander! Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so exciting. We we now have more computing power in our pockets the than the Lunar Lander, Lander did. <laughs> Whoa. That will nest actually inside of it. That's so great. And then it also has the little splash pod with the little buoys and everything on its own little C thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's super good. But yeah, it totally breaks off into sections so and is cool. super cool. And like everything mounts together. Oh, it's, it is probably the raddest. Um, I made sure to not be a shit and I bought it direct from Lego. Yeah. So yeah, that's fantastic. I waited for shipping, but I didn't give Amazon any of my money. <laughs> so I feel good about that. Let me get that seated back in. Also, um, I was, um, but yeah, it actually comes with stands to like lay the thing down and it is fucking rad. That's fantastic. I, I was working at NASA when they made the deal with okay, Lego. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go put it down over there. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. I was working at NASA, um, as part of the public affairs office when they actually made that deal and um, they started small with like a cost like small minifigs and like a small version of the space shuttle. Uh, but it's great to see like them expanding to, to the bigger, to the bigger kits. And that fucking lunar lander is goddamn adorable. Like 
I've I've seen people do fan versions of um, space shuttles and things like that, but that that lander is adorable. Like it's that's a ten out of ten. The little the little lander's adorable, but here's the problem. Now I've got the bug, and they do a like a full size eight inch by eight inch lunar lander <sighs> for like a hundred bucks that I can go pick up tomorrow at fucking Target <laughs> and go and make. And I'm fighting the urge real hard. Like, and bear in mind, Jamie, I put most of my toys away. Like, <laughs> just didn't even bother with them. Put them, put most of them away. Like, hang on, fuck it. Let's, let's give, hang on. Let me see if I can do a bit of an impromptu thing here. Let's give the people I think a the tour. cables will hold. I'm going to unplug the, the HDMI here. All right, so I've got microphone in hand. So this Ooh. corner of the office hasn't really changed much. Got all of my plushies and everything else like that, featuring also the Jamie Noguchi favorite. Uh, let's see, a bunch of cool art. My favorite Bob Newhart quote. Quote, uh, I don't like country music, but I don't mean to denigrate those who do. And for those people who like country music, denigrate means put down. So, you know, <laughs> Bob Newhart's a goddamn treasure. Uh, let's see beautiful, the drum beautiful, kit with beautiful. my yep. new rug. Yep. Fancy, fancy. Yep. Gorgeous. Uh, let's see. And then redid a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to hang a bunch of the hats up there. I got to go and get a few things to be able to hang that up there. But Lucha Mass out. Uh, let's see the typewriter, a couple toys. And then this, the Pied de Resistance. <laughs> The actual wall itself. Oh, it's so colorful. With the Jamie Noguchi custom guitar. Actually, you know what? Fuck. It. Hang on. I'm gonna go grab that fucking guitar. Oh, because cool. I don't know. Did we ever gush about this on the podcast? I I don't know. I don't know if we ever did. <laughs> uh, Brandon's favorite guitar is the Gibson Firebird because that was the guitar you learned on, right? Yeah, so when I was growing up, my dad was, before I was born, my dad was into uh, booking bands locally. And there was a gentleman named Dale Coleman. Dale was a bit of a guitar virtuoso, but also a really heavy heroin addict. Um, genuinely nice guy, just couldn't seem to fucking fight the disease. But what Dale did was he decided that he really liked my dad and he really liked me. And he decided to teach me how to play guitar. Now, he had a Gibson Firebird, and it is a very distinct guitar. And I knew his was his. He used to wear one of those big 70s fucking belt buckles that scraped all the paint off the back of the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. smash cut to, let's see, I learned the guitar at probably eight or nine years old. And I'm in my early 20s. I'm in Guitar Center in Towson, Maryland. I see this sunburst Gibson Firebird. I ask them to take it off the wall. They pull it down. I flip it over. Paint's missing. Oh, no. It's Dale's. I fucking panic. I try and get the money together to buy it. I can't get enough together. I can't talk people into lending me the money. My dad's going through all of his drug shit, so he's out of cash. And I had to let it go. Ugh. And I haven't seen it since. Now, Jamie hears this story and is... The greatest human being I've ever <laughs> had the gift of being around, by the way, and feels fucking like touched by this idea. So in the previous administration, Jamie made me a wedding present. And while the marriage didn't last, the guitar did. <laughs> and Jamie made me a custom painted Gibson Firebird, complete with the BC up on the head and then made a goddamn phoenix, a mecha phoenix, on the fucking body. <laughs> and it is my favorite thing. <laughs> it's If the house burned down, I'd grab my fiancé, the dog, and this guitar. Aww. Like, <laughs> it's, it's that important. Yeah. So, kids, the important thing to remember is when you have great friends, be sure to tell them that they're great friends and that you love them dearly. <laughs> so I'm going to go put this back and I'm going to go wipe my eyes because it's getting fucking dusty. Oh, yeah. I the the thing that I'm bummed about is I couldn't I couldn't afford an actual Gibson Firebird because those things are like a couple grand. But I could I could afford the Epiphone. Expensive. Yeah. 
That's okay. Because the important thing is no one has the one that I have. That's true. <laughs> other people can have an Epiphone. Other people can have a Firebird. Nobody's got my axe. And that will be true in perpetuity. Yeah. Like, shit, if I end up having kids, shit's going to the next generation with a literal note on it that goes, if you sell this, I'll fucking haunt you. <laughs> like, I don't care if it sits in the case in their bedroom or in their basement or whatever it is, don't you dare fucking sell that. You pass it down to a family member until somebody learns how to play and they fucking appreciate this thing. But, yeah. Yeah, I... I th it sounds so good. I had a lot of fun painting it, too, because, like, it's... I love guitars, and to, like, be able to put my art on a guitar and have it sound like something, that's fucking cool to me. Like, it, if... If I ever decide to that this comic book stuff is killing me, I'm gonna just do something stupider and start making guitars and like do weird art and shit on them and stuff. Um, so you did that for a bit because you did a couple dragon guitars and they were fucking rad. Yeah, no one had bought them. <laughs> yeah, I I know. It, it, if people bought them, I, know. I would still be doing them. But uh, yeah, no argument. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I might try. Yeah, so that's what it. I've been up to. That's awesome. Do it as a passion project, man. Like, if if anything, do it as a passion project. Make something for yourself. Yeah, I I have a guitar in mind. I just I don't have the parts for it yet. Um, but I I have a guitar build that I want to do, and um, I I have to think about it. I have a friend who has like this massive wood router so he can like do all this sort of CNC and shit like that. So like, um, I'm going to try to convince him to make me some bodies, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Excited. I've, I have a plan. Awesome. I have a plan. And then when I make mine, I'm going to start making other customs and say like, all right, I'm going to put this up for sale. If you buy it, you get it, you know, that kind of thing. But we'll see. I, I yeah. have, I have thought about this path because I'm an idiot and I can't help but make like all of my hobbies monetized in some form or another. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it, it, it was a lot of fun and uh, I was happy to do it. And it was, it was such a, you know, things like guitars are, you find the one and that's it. That's all. That's it. You yeah. have to have it. You have to have it. Yeah. No, I get that. I totally get that. And <laughs> that's that's coming from somebody who has their one. But I still get that of like you see something you're like, like, because admittedly, I, I don't play guitar nearly as much as I used to because I'm trying to dig more into the drums. And even then, if I manage to find myself like a turquoise flying V with a white pick guard and a f hard fucking whammy bar, I would be. Hard press not to spend way too much money on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just do I need it? Nope. Nope. Do I want it? Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> Jamie. We only got a few minutes left. What have you been geeking on? What's what's been up with you, man? Because uh, we we took some weeks off. We yeah. had some personal life happening. Yeah. What's what you geeking on, man? What's what's going on with in the land of Noguchi? So, um, one of our mutuals was in town for work. Um, you remember Vicky uh, from the the Connecticut Con the Connecticut Con crew? She did the Samus cosplay. Yes. Oh, yeah, Victoria Miller, I think. Yeah, um, she was in town yeah. uh, doing some training because um, she works at Six Flags. And so um, her department up in Massachusetts, um, she's part of a new department. And so she needed training down here and they have that department built out down here. So she was she called me up and she's like, hey, are you doing anything? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Um, so we got together uh, Thursday, last Thursday. Um, to just hang out and catch up and stuff like that. We tried to, nothing is open at nine anymore. So like we, we met up at nine and tried to find a place to get some food. Uh, but like, you know, typical con thing we got. Could you, could you not go to all the meets? No, cause they don't, they were closed and they're so, um, the six flags is in, I don't even know where it's. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's way the fuck down it's, there. It's way the fuck out of out of there. So like we were going to we were going to meet in uh at the Silver Diner in College Park or Greenbelt like cuz that's halfway. By the time I got there, her lift hadn't picked her up and I was like, "Well, I'm like I'm like 15 minutes away from Greenbelt. I'll just drive down, meet up and then we'll there you we'll, go. we'll just fucking hang out and find some place." We ended up going to the Wendy's drive-in and or drive through <laughs> and got way too much food and just hung out at the hotel lobby like you do at a typical convention. You find the cheapest ass yeah. food and you just hang out in the lobby and you just hang out. And I, we were hanging out and I was like, this is, this is the best part of the con. Like eating <laughs> shit food and hanging out in some lobby. Um, and, and yeah, and I miss that. Like that's, that's the part. Like I'm, I I miss doing shows and meeting people and all that kind of stuff. But like, the the after con stuff, like going to a, a a shitty restaurant or going to a restaurant you can't afford but you're doing it anyway, and then like ending up at a hotel in the lobby, in the in the lobby bar in the hotel bar if there is a bar and just chilling out. Right. You know, it's it's weird. I realize that like. Me, because of my divorce, and then with your schedule and what have you, since you and I have retired from Art Fight, I don't know if we've done a con together. Yeah. And, like, motherfucker, are we do. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, boy, are we do. Like, yeah. we, need to, we need to get a show together <laughs> yeah. and just go fucking travel. Like, yeah. well, I, I was we need to do that. I was hoping to do that with the book. Um, and we, we might have some opportunities when cons come back. Cause I, our publisher does some of the shows. So like, we might be able to get to some of the other shows, but like, I, that's, that's the part I miss is just all the hanging out and like doing stuff. Like when we went, when we did packs, um, you and Mikey had to go back early just cause you are smart. Um, yeah. and the yeah. <laughs> so, smart might be a loaded word because we we drove to boston and then back again so yeah um but we ended up playing like we we went on the show floor we found a game that we all really liked we ended up spending like two hours playing this stupid game while everyone else was milling around and stuff and then we went to dinner afterwards and that's the shit that i miss is like hanging out in the the moments between stuff like sure i yeah. like i like making money who doesn't like making money um yeah well, absolutely but like you know that's that's the part of travel that i miss is like going to going to a place and then having the locals tell us you know a good place to eat and taking us to like taking Dude. us to their favorite sushi joint or something like that or all that kind of fuck it i i have a great idea let's go do ocean city comic con <laughs> OC. It's Ocean City in December. I think I, I think Ember's seafood buffet is still open <laughs> for the December crowd. We'll eat my treat. We'll eat way too much seafood. We'll get a hotel. We'll hang out at the beach. We'll go do all the fun shit. Like, I think our fight will be there, so we'll know some people. Like, we go kind of hang out with everybody, and if we don't want to deal with anybody, we just yeah, fucking out. throw up the deuces and roll out. Do we have to do dinner with everybody? Fuck no. <laughs> I'll drive us down there. Fuck it. I'll come pick you up and drive us down there. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's the part of cons that I miss is um, – meeting new people and then hanging out with them afterwards. Cause like we, we met them. Yeah. We met them at Kineticon and they, they were like, I didn't, we didn't know them beforehand and they just hung out and we saw no, them at the barbecue I mean, joint and they were like, Hey, you guys been, are cool. Yeah. I mean, we've been friends with them. God, I don't even remember how long ago it was that we started all kind of hanging out with that crew. Yeah. But like immediate connection with all of them. Yeah. But yeah, we, and that's, you know, the opinions may vary crew that's, that's Victoria and her crew. Like they were the best part of my, my last art fight trip. Yeah. Literally we did that show in mystic for the, uh, for the Navy <laughs> and they drove way the fuck out of nowhere. <laughs> and then we went to a goddamn trampoline park <laughs> and had dinner and yeah, it, 
it was it was a very fitting last trip for me where it was like, yep, it's a skeleton crew. I'm driving way too far for a show that doesn't make any sense. It's probably not going to get us anywhere, but I'm going to put a ton of effort into it. But I get to see my friends and that's awesome. That, that's, yeah, that's part of the reason why we start doing it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely not the reason I stopped doing it. I <laughs> waited for a two. A different problem. <laughs> hey, Hoosel, yeah, I actually miss doing the dumb shows and all the driving and everything else like that, weirdly enough. Yeah. That never bothered me. Yeah. Because I always just assumed that, like, no matter what was going on, I was going to end up in a random place with my friends, and we were going to have fun no matter what was going on. I never had really, like, I had less fun nights at cons, but I never had a bad night at a con. Yeah. Like we go on one of those shows and I never went to fucking bed angry. We never were at each other's shit about anything. Even if a show sucked, I still had a good time with everybody because <laughs> all we did was bitch about the show afterward. That's that's looking at met, you, Otakon. Yeah, that's like how, that's how we met Phil Chan, like at a real shit show. And like, yeah, I, that's that's the best part of the show. Right. But that always seems to be the. Right, that always seems to be the weirdest part of those shows where we end up kind of bonding with people yeah. that we didn't expect to because they see us at a shit show really trying hard for like <laughs> nine people. Yeah. And it's like, look, we're going to do this thing for us, so either you fucking start shouting or I'm just going to run myself hoarse. Like, it's up to you. Yeah. But I'm going to yell same same as always. We're going to do yeah. it. We got it, mega. I'm looking at you, cosplayer in the third row. <laughs> this show's for you. For you. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, Naruto, <laughs> let's get ready to shout Will of Death together. Come on, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So that that was a nice um, reminder of, like... That's awesome. The, the circuit and all that kind of that stuff. That is awesome awesome notice i didn't get a fucking phone call but whatever not bitter Look. not bitter not gonna <laughs> it was genuinely i'm kidding it was way. it was midnight before we got any food so no i i get <laughs> i get that trust me it, captain fucking turns into a pumpkin and has to be like honestly i'd have been better off coming home sleeping then driving down then just leaving from the hotel lobby yeah. to work yeah. like that's realistically what what would have been a better plan for me yeah so i get <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah it's completely thrown my shit off second it's like 11 o'clock i'm like getting fucking tired around here everyone's looking at me like you all right. It's getting late. Mm. <laughs> Did you have your Geritol? You feeling okay? <laughs> yeah. It's getting late, Sonny. All right, uh, Brandon, let's let's put Where? a pin in it. Let's put a pin yeah. in it. Where can people find yeah. you? You can find me on Instagram at that guy Chalmers, Jamie Noguchi. Where can they find you and your loving personality? Those dulcet tones, that beautiful <laughs> smile, and those delicious wares that you pedal ever so often. Uh, uh, Instagram, Jamie Noguchi. Uh, Twitter, Angry Zen Master. Wherever you find this podcast, of course. And uh, yeah, that's all we got. Peace.